Welcome to Mom Boss Chronicles, the show that celebrates the incredible journey of mom bosses who are conquering the world of business and motherhood. We are your hosts, Jen, Danielle, and Sue. Make sure to like and subscribe and share with your mom friends today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mom Boss Chronicles. Today, we have a very special guest, Julie Morawick. Yes, is that right? That's right. Yes, you did it. <laughs> so Julie is a retired NYPD cop, and I'm just so excited to have you here. <laughs> She's also a mom of three. And I, the way we met was kind of fun. She was... Uh, she's a friend of my sister-in-law, so they were hanging out at her house. I unexpectedly stopped by, and we just crossed paths. I was going in, she was going wow. out, and somehow she just started telling me her story, wow. and I just thought it was so fun and interesting. And I was like, do you want to be on my podcast? <laughs> and she was like, wait, I've always wanted to be on a podcast. Yeah, and I just thought it was like fate. For whatever awesome. reason, we're meant to be yeah. sitting here having this conversation, so thank you for taking the timing absolutely and coming out so tell me how did you get into law enforcement well it's um it's funny that the story is kind of funny or unusual i would guess like a lot of people would be like yeah i always dreamed of being a cop or you know it would be like really something that i wanted to do or and i had like no interest in being so a cop. there was no childhood dreams no no <laughs> as a matter of fact i was kind of like resistant to it at mm. first so my ex husband my husband at the time was a chef and that's how we met i was a caterer in manhattan he was a chef right. and and did you love food and cooking oh yeah <laughs> oh, that's awesome. and you know and i have to say he was an excellent he was excellent at what he did he was like one of the best chefs i've ever seen in my life still to this day wow. and i was you know we'll just throw modesty aside i was very good at what i did um that's awesome. i was yeah i worked for some really big names in manhattan that's cool and then what i did what I did was I eventually went into consulting for like big companies because this was in the 90s. So mm -hmm. it was like just when like gourmet food mm -hmm. retailers were coming out, you know, like now you can't like go anywhere without walking into like a gourmet sandwich shop with mm -hmm, like right. really good coffee or something. Back then it was just starting. It was just starting. And so I worked a lot with retail, retail food because of my catering experience and so some of these really big places were opening these little outlets and they just, it doesn't, if you have a restaurant, it doesn't, this retail food doesn't translate. Mm. So I used to tell people I make rich men richer. I would, <laughs> I would go in and I would like, you know, take everything apart I and then that. I put in new menus. Yeah, and like new, yeah it was. So it you was would a lot of like fun. zhuzh it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zhuzh it up. <laughs> Yeah. So my husband at the time, he had always wanted to be a fireman. Oh, always that was his dream. One. Yes, yeah. that was his dream. Yeah. And so the opportunity came up, but he was 32. Oh, wow. And so he went into the fire academy and I continued working in Manhattan. And even even that was like, you know, as a mother, you know, you know this commute from Staten Island is very long. It was at least an hour each way. It was at least an hour, wow. at least an hour, usually two hours on the way home. Wow. So you, hours. Yeah, yeah a big chunk of your day. Yeah. I remember racing home from the bus. You know, the, the express bus would drop me at where my car was, getting my car, racing oh. in my car to go get my son from aftercare oh. and being at pitch black, the yeah. last person oh. to pick him up and the principal oh. holding his hand while I, you know, ah! Wait, yeah, and then, yeah, yes, and the then, yeah, it was, you know, so, so it wasn't a perfect situation. And also at the time in the nineties, there really wasn't like a lot of options. Like mm -hmm. you either worked in Manhattan or you didn't make money, mm -hmm. you know, that wasn't yeah. like now it's really organic right. everywhere. It's yeah. Like everywhere. And, um, so, uh, after a couple of years of this, I'm usually like a really optimistic person and whatnot, but after a couple of years, after he had gotten on the fire department, I come home and I'm like. Uh, you know, life's a shit sandwich. Oh, oh, yeah. We can say that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> life's a shit sandwich. Yes. And he's like, you know, that's not like you. He's like, I really think you should make a change. You should, you should take a test for the city, go into civil service. Because you were and, just like exhausted from the commute and the long hours. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like, I'm like, I couldn't see a light at the end of the time. And you were a mom of two at this point. Right? I was a mom of two. Yeah. yeah. I had a 10 year old and an 11 year old. Wow. And, you know, so, and also like their activities get more. Yes, I can and, imagine. Then the food industry doesn't have any insurance. It doesn't have like oh, a 401k. Yeah. To, you know, maybe it's you tough. get two weeks off. Right. It's like, it's, you know, nothing. It wasn't a good family kind of, balance. Right. Yeah. So I was just like, what test are they giving? And for years leading up to that, he's like, you should take the cop test. Oh, I'm like, I don't want to do that. Why do you say that? 
yeah. you know, it's like so funny. funny. Right. right, right. So I finally was like, fine, just sign me up. So I didn't even sign up for it. Wow. He signed me up. And I had just turned 34. And they, um, you know, the cutoff is 35. Wow. So but you usually, just, yeah. yeah, just slid in. Slid in. Yeah. But the thing is, is they usually take like a year to 18 months to two years wow. before they hire. So, so this it's a long was, process. I didn't even realize. Well, they, you know, which is good. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, the best process. <laughs> we want to check people out. True. You don't want to just hire them on the spot. Yeah. 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 Like, sure, you filled your name out here. You did good on this. Come on over. <laughs> Let's start tomorrow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, probably, I can't even imagine how many, <laughs> I can't even imagine how many applicants there must be. I mean, for those yeah. city jobs. Yes. Right? Yeah. They get thousands. Yeah. I think it's changed over the years mm-hmm. but yeah. at this time yeah. it was, yeah. was it, was the test hard it was i actually studied for it well, like you could get you like could a, for it yeah <laughs> which you could get one of those booklets yeah. that kind of tells you, you, took you it know serious. what to yeah that's good and that going back to you know i was older i was older i looked at things differently you're mature yes yeah. And, you know, a little bit of life experience and which I think is helpful going oh, into, yeah. you know, especially a job where you're, you know, your decisions. I had somebody in the academy when they were teaching us, they said, just remember, you have an, an, a, a serious responsibility now. You have the power to take someone's freedom away. Mm-hmm. And that is should never be taken lightly. Mm-hmm. And that stuck with me. That yeah. always stuck with me. So, but the process w- was, I guess, because I was kind of like older and, you know, my record was clean. Or whatever, <laughs> you know, it's like five months later, I'm like, you know, yeah. and I even Were asked you my father. At that time? I was, but I was nervous too. I was like, I called my dad and I was like, I don't know. You know, even at 34, we still call our dads, oh, right? Oh, oh, always seen our parents. Yes. 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 So I'm like, I don't know. What should I do? What should I do? Yeah. And he's like, Julie. The food business will always be there. Right. So true. Just do it until you don't like yeah. it. Anymore. Yeah. Try this. Yeah. So true. And I can safely say the first 10 years were like straight up fun. Oh, just wow. Like, that's awesome. That's so <laughs> great. That's yeah. a long time. Because yeah. when I think yeah. of being a young police officer in the city, I think of walking the beat. Is that what you did? I did. And I think of night shift. Did you do like, I did. Right? Because I walked the beat at night. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have uh, cousins who are NYPD and, you know, the beginning, I think they give you bad shifts, bad locations, yes. right? Yes. You did yeah. that. Yeah. It was funny. When I got assigned, I was carpooling from Staten Island with a couple of, you know, I was... I would say younger guys, but I was older than everyone. So anyways, um, but, you know, I was always very athletic and stuff like that. So it was like really not a problem in that regard. And plus I was like, you know, studying. (laughs) So we got our assignments and one guy was 26. One guy was 27. We get in the car and I was like, so where are you guys going? And one guy was like, Staten Island. The other guy's like, Staten Island. And they're like, where are you going? I'm like, Harlem, Flatbush. <laughs> oh, Flatbush. Brooklyn. Right. Yeah, right. so you had to go to Brooklyn. Yeah, I was like, right. oh wow. Why are you sending me to Flatbush? <laughs> you know? Can I stay in Staten Island? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it was it was Flatbush, and it was midnight night tours, I mean, and it, it was wow. yeah, that's bravery. Post yeah. and. I appreciate that you started this journey as a 34 year old woman who had children because. Yeah. Nothing, nothing in life teaches you more about like resilience and organization than being a mom. And then you were, you're doing all that, like your your emotional intelligence, your frontal lobe is like, you're like, I would want that. You're exactly the police officer I would want. In my neighborhood. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Well, and you know what? It's like, it's, you can learn so much from every, you, that's really how you learn. It's from everybody that you work with. And Mm -hmm. I found that on the department that the command that I went to, I mean, there was like these really strong, like intelligent, calm women that they do kind of like, they, you know, they mama bear you, even though, you know, yeah. Yeah. So they didn't turn like, and that's really good and fascinating to hear because in certain industries, I feel like the older women kind of turn on you and don't give you that. Yeah. 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 Cause it might be threatening. And I guess maybe in this situation, because like, it's not like I could steal their job. Yeah. They had more more rank and yeah. Seniority and stuff like that. So they were supportive. Right. Right. That's amazing. It's like they know they're going to be out an X amount of time on their own accord, sort of. So right. Yeah. That's nice. So there were a lot of women. There, did- there were a lot of women that really, they taught you also to deal with like, you know, the, it's a man's world, mm-hmm. you know, the man aspect of, I mean. And, and do you see that? Yeah, that- you do. I mean, it's like, listen, I, I love all my brothers and sisters in blue. 
But, you know, there are times where you come across like, you know, you have to. I felt like sometimes like even as I got older or got more experience on the job, like I had to prove myself almost every day. Like I was starting over as a woman. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure that I was faster, stronger, better, mm-hmm. and and showing that every single day. Now, that could have just been my own insecurities or whatnot, because like I said, it's, a, you know, we all work together. It's very supportive. And on the other turn of the coin, when we would go into situations, like, I felt like it was important for people to see me as a police officer mm-hmm. versus a woman in a lot of situations, just because that's better for them mm-hmm, because yeah. they may not deal with a woman every time. Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, some family situations or, you know, some domestics or something, people would sometimes say, you know what I'm saying, miss, you oh. understand, right? And I would say to them, right. you can talk to my partner too, because we wear the same uniform. Yeah. But that would also be a good, it's also good to advocate that way because then you're partner is realizing that, yeah, I'm, what I'm saying to you is we're equals brother. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, and I'm sure sometimes were people surprised to see you come up on the call if you did have certain like calls or situations where other females happy to see a female police officer. They were. And, and I tried to be very um, in tune with that and empathetic. And if they were more comfortable talking to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Beneficial. I'm sure yeah. if they were maybe hesitant to, to disclose up. something yeah. to, yeah. you know, a male officer. And whenever there was children involved, um, in when I first started, I had a female partner. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's like whenever children were involved, they would they would call us in, mm-hmm. which was, you know, comforting for everybody involved. Yeah. And, but then again, like I said, on the other turn of the coin, it's like I would say, you know, but why? There's yeah, dads, right. too. They They're dads. They, yeah. yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, there's like, you know, there's cops. That, they're dads. They they're take care of children, too. Yeah. So yeah. it was a balancing act, uh, you know, all the time, like, as you know, trying to prove yourself, right. which could have been in my head. And that's uh, not, I'm not really sure. But I did joke around a lot that if there was like a group of cops standing around and we were all discussing like a certain situation or something, I'd be like giving them the answer. I'd, <laughs> I'd be saying, well, you know, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And they'd be like, just, you know, and I'd be like, yeah. X, Y, and Z. hear me? Yeah. yeah. And I'd finally I'd be like, is, is my voice a dog whistle yeah. or is the words actually coming out of my mouth? Like, and they'd like turn and look and they'd be oh, like, yeah. oh, you know what? X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I just said that. <laughs> yeah. Like, why is that? Right, right. It's crazy. So you, not to like jump the storyline, but you retired right before COVID hit, right? I retired as the city was shutting down. Oh, Thank you, Angels. Timing, yeah. So 2020. March 20th, wow. 2020. Because like, did you 9-11? Yeah. Were you there? Oh, yeah. So, um, well, thank God. I No, I was the aftermath. I okay. was not there on the day. But of, you were there when? For months afterwards, oh, yeah. So you've seen crisis. So yeah. sure when COVID yeah. was happening, you're like, wow, I don't have to deal with this. I was very grateful because yeah. I don't know if I had another one in me. Yeah. You know, our mental health is, and I think that a lot of times as women as, and mothers, we will shelve all that. Like my needs, I, I need to be there for everyone else. Mm-hmm. So your, your mental health, your filling the cup back up yeah. and all of those things are second to everyone else. Yeah. And I just don't think that I had enough self-care at that point. I don't know if I had another crisis in me. Um, So it's good that you were able to like retire at that point. We we may not be having this podcast. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because I can imagine each year as a cop is new stressors, new situations. Like, yeah, yeah. just like the daily, like the things you must see. And I think, you know, obviously cops get this, the bad reputation. And I just think they don't like us. And it's (laughs) They don't like you until you they need you, yeah, right? But exactly. It's and this is in no way a political yeah, thing no. that I'm saying or anything. It's, a human it's thing. just it's just the truth. And I think it's just like any other profession. There's good people and there's mm, bad people. Totally. And it yeah, it's highlighted, I'm sure, mm-hmm. with you know, when you're a cop or a firefighter or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I just I can't imagine what you guys must see on a day to day basis that like the toll it must take when you have to go home to your family. Right. And then, yeah, Yeah, and then deal with your family and, but trying to switch that off and switch the mommy switch back (laughs) on that's, and I think there's a, there it's, 
definitely a lot of professions that are like that, mm-hmm. you know, that, that are high stress, you know, ER doctors and nurses yeah. and, you know, EMTs, firemen yeah. and a lot of, a lot of jobs like that. It's not particular just to that job, but right. there, there is a lot of stressors. And also it's like, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to ever say that like the NYPD was, it's a, it's an amazing institution. And just as like a little sidebar, a little footnote, there are so many checks and balances in place awesome. to make sure that things are being done correctly. Awesome. It's it's beyond anybody's belief. Like, and it's such you a know, big, important city, so that's good to hear. Everything yeah. is, yeah. And, and honestly, if you go by the statistics, it's like just going to like, let's say, officer-involved shootings, it's the lowest in the country. Wow. You're talking a massive city, a yeah. massive yeah. department. And they have the lowest. That's amazing. Officer. Great training. Then, to yeah. Like yeah. It's one of the biggest uh, police departments in the world, isn't it? It is the biggest one. Wow. Like the amount of training that NYPD gets. I mean, I grew yeah. up in Jersey City for 40 years. So I grew up in a household with a with law enforcement. So utmost respect. Obviously, I've gotten to hear some stuff that my father's had to experience. He's come home hurt. You know, I mean... Mm-hmm. It's a lot, you know, and I'm sure. Thank him for his service. Going back to like the, the fact that um how things have changed, you know, in the, in the past, what, 20, 30, 20 years, I guess, or so. And the lack of respect it feels like police officers are getting these days is, is heartbreaking because I know mm-hmm. firsthand what love, passion, you care about your neighborhood. You care about the people yeah. so much, you know, and it's just... um crazy it's crazy so i appreciate everything that you have mm-hmm. your love and passion that you've put in Absolutely. yeah thank you yeah, it's and, so beautiful to hear you know yeah. it's like you were saying and talking about your father it's like you know for you to think about your father going to work and maybe people not being receptive to him or whatnot and that's the human element that mm-hmm. comes into mm-hmm. all of it and you know I, I would always remind my cops because i got promoted to sergeant in 2007 wow. and so i was then i was supervising men and women that's awesome and i would always tell them remember this this is this may become every day to you like you can get desensitized yeah. to it but and then as a parent or a mother you just want to go home at night and, to, mm-hmm. and be with your family so you and i would remind them pretty rarely this is the worst day of that person's life. Right. They you go into people's homes all the time, but they don't have cops in their That's homes so all the time. Yeah. This is a stressful situation. <clears throat> you have to remember the human element. Yeah. And you know, that also is it would help myself and I think them when they do go home because then if they you can do your job no matter how stressful it is or whatever type of job it is and then and keep that human element mm-hmm. with yourself throughout the day. It it makes it easier when you do go home and you want to be present, be present, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and laugh and and joke with your kids because were um, the kids I guess supportive of your career? So they were, they were. You know, it was funny. I had another. I had my last child in uh, when I had three years on the job. Wow, so, so it's you're like, pregnant. yeah, how does that work? Yeah, like, being a pregnant yeah, police officer. How does that work? Yeah, and well, you actually you um you have they have a whole. Pregnancy medical division. That's how big this department That's amazing. is. Amazing. They have a cool. whole division. Yeah, they treat you like gold. Cool. Um, like when I went down there to register, I went in uniform and I drove, you know, a police vehicle down there because I I don't like to drive a police vehicle with, if I'm not in uniform. I want a radio. I want a vest. I want my Batman belt. Yeah. I want. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so the woman that was checking me in, she looks at me and she goes, "Wait a second, you're three months pregnant?" And I was like, "Yes." She was like. Girl, you need to go home and take that uniform off. Go oh. back to your bed. She's like, you should not be wearing all that. <laughs> and I was really They're supportive. They protective over you. Yeah. That's great. Uh, yeah. We need really... more of that. Yes, yeah, great. Right. More industries that are like yeah. understanding and yeah. supportive of like the changes you go through. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. It was, uh, it was very good. So did you have good, better work-life balance with being a police officer than you did with the catering, would you say? I think so because the catering, it was... It was um, something that I was very good at, but Mm -hmm. I, 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 and I loved, but it was, I always felt as though it wasn't exactly what I would be doing if I had the choice. Like I I always felt like I was doing it because I was making money and I was good at it. To get a job. Right. Yeah. And with the policing, you know, you do have that, that brotherhood, that bond. It's, they are very supportive. They're so supportive. That's amazing. It's very, I liked the structure. Yeah. Yeah. It is very, very structured. 
and that I, I worked well with. And I think that the, the times that I had difficulty with it was when, like I said, I have like, I say like a lot. I just, <laughs> like, so right. when I listen back, I, I, I'm like, like, man, I say it's like that. Girl. <laughs> so so um, I didn't notice. <laughs> The balance between the family, but also when you have a spirituality, that was probably one of the hurdles that I had as I was policing because you want to be so, you want to have, greet everybody with love mm -hmm. and open that openness and that kindness. But unfortunately, and, and that's why there are police, there, unfortunately, there are some bad people. And I would just have to remind myself, not bad people, they're people that make bad decisions. Right. Yes. That's really what it is. Yeah. And, we and see it in every industry. Mm. Yes. Yeah. In our industry is realtors. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I would, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some of us that are amazing and some that we look at, we're like, why did you do that or say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, 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 that's not helpful to anyone. It's yeah. kind of, it's, and I'm sure you've experienced that too. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, like, what a drastic change in careers. Too. Yeah. That must have been like, it's like just one day you're waking up and you're a police office. Like, I can't imagine, yeah. like, tomorrow I'm a police yeah. officer. Like, that's pretty wild, you know? Well, and that's another thing I have to give the NYPD a pat on the back because having um, been a little bit older in the academy, they have – it is such an amazing way that they can actually take a civilian right. and – Mold you. And teach you, mold you yeah. safely, correctly. yeah. I mean, they have behavioral science. You take classes yeah. on behavioral That's science. Awesome. You take classes on the law. You That's take awesome. classes on social interactions. I and wish every police department had this. Say, so why is this not I a know. universal? And it's and I I wish that like everything else. Other, in, like police officers, I'm sure you'll hear like training so minimal. The support right. that they have is so mm -hmm. minimal. So I, I just I just, this little tidbit I want to throw in. So I. A couple of weeks ago, went with my eight-year-old. He had a field trip to the Ocean Township Police Department. Wow, where they we did live. that? That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, it was so cool, I have to say. That's amazing. And it does give you this new respect because they sit them all down and they talk to them. They go over stats. And so there's 30,000 residents in Ocean Township and 61 officers. Yeah. So, like, can you, you stretch imagine? Them. Yeah. Like, yeah. And there's people calling for all sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, all my, sorts of things. My two year old got her leg stuck in our coffee table mm. a couple of weeks ago, and I had a call because yeah. I couldn't get it out. Yeah. My husband wasn't home. Yeah. And they broke the, yeah, the yeah. wood and they got our leg out. That's I mean, amazing. that's just like one person. Yeah. At, 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 you know, yeah, you're, just, you're going, they're going on all sorts of like, the, you know, not everything is um, a foot pursuit and, uh, yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's or a traffic just, stop, right? Right. Like, it's yeah. Different elements every day. You yeah. don't know what you're going to deal with. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's unfortunate, the, I think, the lack of respect that is given, but I guess it's a whole. Yeah. <laughs> well, whole yeah. Thing. There's like, there's, you know, so many angles that can yeah. be looked at from, right, but I, you know, I just hope that people realize that, you know, behind every, you know, shield, we call it a shield. We don't call it a badge. Behind every shield is a mother, a brother, oh, a son, a, a sister, yeah. a person. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, we're human yeah. beings, people. Right. <laughs> feeling. Doing a job. Yeah. yeah. And, Time to protect your ass. And yeah. Thank you. Or enrich your serve and protect. Okay. Yeah. Like, and I've only seen, and I'm sure like when you were exposed to it growing up with your father, I, my experience, I have seen only the best of the best. That's awesome. And I always tell people that nobody likes a bad cop. Nobody dislikes a bad cop more than a good cop. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah, yeah, it's just. Yeah. You know, and even the smaller departments, like they 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 train and they do as much as they can with the ability that they have. Mm -hmm. But I have to say the NYPD is so massive. It's 40,000 people. Wow. It's, it's bigger than the town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so they have a lot of. Yeah. And and so many amazing people that just really do want to help the little girl with her leg right. in the coffee table or, you know, and all the, all the other smaller things that we do go on and, and help people for with. the community. Yeah. yeah for I the love community. that you mentioned before about your spirituality. So yeah. before being a police officer, were you spiritual or did that get you more spiritual being a police officer? It kind of like, I think it was brought to me as part of my path okay. to maybe accelerate my spiritual path for me personally, because of it forced me to, expand my spirituality as I went, you know, I had some really low lows and, you know, there's always the high highs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, having another baby oh, and then yeah. having three great healthy children. Yeah. And, but, you know, as moms, I think we all know that, you know, we have to have our own well 
to drink from. A hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the first time I remember really having an experience, I was 14 years old and I had kind of like a, I was laying by my pool. I grew up in California, so I was laying by my pool probably in December. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) Seriously. And I felt, I felt above my body. So I, I guess it would be called an out of body experience, but Mm -hmm. I was, I was like up in the sky and I was looking at myself I wasn't, I wasn't having any sort of physical, you know, problems or anything, but, and I was just like, wow, this is really interesting. Wow. I'm up there. I'm up there. I'm not here. Wow. So it just kind of continued throughout my lifetime where in the beginning, it was like studying different religions and and trying to get an exposure to different things. Like being open to like, yeah. 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 And and it is funny as a mom when, you know, it, I am so happy that it's so mainstream now because, you know, it like. 80s, 90s. It was like they were. They were my friends would call me the woo woo. Oh, my woo yeah. woman. And, yeah, woo woo. Yeah, and, like people were making fun of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was just something not taken serious. Uh, yeah, yes. it was. It was very um, off the beaten path. Yeah, which I guess I could be pretty off the beaten path sometimes. But, <laughs> That's <fun>. um, <laughs> one of my one of my children is extremely just in tune with it. Oh, wow. And um, so, it, yeah, and we always had this. And I don't know if any if any of you have had this, but this is a quick mom story. Like when he was born, he, as soon as I gave birth to him, he turned his head and we just locked eyes. Oh. Like, like he, like, it, and I know yeah. he's like, oh, well, he was probably just looking at you. You don't even know. <laughs> we locked thing. eyes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, somebody, when you know, like I've been through multiple yeah. lifetimes. Oh, yeah. So I feel like, that with my daughter. It's so weird. We have this like bond where I'm like, I don't know, but we've definitely have lived life together before. Oh, and yeah. with my son and my husband are so connected. I'm like, you too. Yeah. Like yeah. have this energy. And I love yeah, that. that's it. Like just, you just feel it. You yeah. know that you're going through another lifetime together. Yeah. And it's such a gift. You're like, wow, this is so cool. Like, I know. Yeah. I know. And we talk about my son now is 34. And so, but we, so we talk a lot about it and oh. it's really cool because, he you feels know, it too. yeah. Oh yeah. He's it's very, um, yeah. this That's is, so this is the Marine fireman, but he's oh, wow. very, like, he's just in tune with a lot of things. He just, we talk about, um, different readings, experiences, vibrations, oh. energy. Um, I follow a lot of, uh, angel work. That's awesome. And, but being in the police department and having, Thank goodness I had that as like a backup because my marriage did end during uh, while I was a police officer. That was hard. Yeah. And my youngest was the other two were on their own, but my youngest was only six. Mm -hmm. And it was better for her, though. Yeah. Yeah, You know, and she was like, she'd try and give me, you know, how kids are. I'm the only one that has to go to two houses. I'm like, you should be happy you should go to two houses. (laughs) They only have one. You have two. (laughs) It's better than one. (laughs) But it really did. It was like a um, safety net. And it was also gave me the uh, pushed me to further that. But I 100 percent since I do. um have a relationship with the angels, which everybody does. I just like seek it out constantly. You're more in tune, I guess. Yeah. Well, and, and I tell people this all the time. There is, there is, I am not like psychic. I have no special training, but I do leave myself really open and I seek it out and I get a lot back. But those angels for the time that I was on the police department, I stayed on patrol the whole 20 years. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, can't teach an old dog new tricks sort of things. I was like, no, I, you know, and after I got promoted, I was a patrol supervisor. And I was like, at towards the end, I'm like, that's what I do. I'm a patrol <laughs> just, this is what I do, yeah. you know? So, but to do 20 years on patrol and not leave that job with a serious that's injury. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It's huge, right? I did 14 years. And in all Brooklyn. different hours of yes. day, night, which did night, like, things happen. Tours. Yeah. You know, wow. um, crazy. We had some wow. crazy jobs, which, you know, you do in a big city. You know? mm-hmm. And it was I knew it was time to retire. I could, you know, you can keep working. I could have worked till I retired at 20 years. I could have worked till 25 years, which means I would still be working now at 58 oh, wow. and a half. But I don't see that happening. Yeah. But I had an option. You can get the pension, right? Yes. Which on the tier that I was hired. OK. Under. Yeah. Cool. I, I get a full pension at 20 years. That's Amazing. awesome. Yeah. And, but I was like, towards the end, you know, the, I think the teaching the old dog new tricks, like 
I, in that 20 years on patrol, I never had one civilian complaint for abuse of authority, That's discourteousness. Amazing. Wow. Um, That's you know, an amazing language, accomplishment. Yeah. You had and, to keep your emotions in check each time and yeah, you did it. And, you know, because you can look at these people and be like that, you know, I can. I, I, and it's funny. I used to call my mom voice because I would go in and. I wouldn't raise my voice <laughs> and I would tell it because, you know, I, I already knew what the law was. I knew if you were coming with me or are you not coming mm -hmm. with me, I don't need to yell. Yeah. But right. I would warn people, don't make me use my mom voice. Oh, you, <laughs> you were diffusing it. I love that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 So well, I did have to use the mom yes. voice, but, um, you know, I was like, you know, it's not going to go your way. <laughs> And I'm going to use my mom well, voice. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm sure that would probably yeah. take people off guard a little and be like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, so. yeah I'm scared. I'm yeah. going <laughs> <laughs> Most of them would. I mean, there are times where people are like on drugs or something yeah. like that. And they, but they it was funny. There was on. this, we came to this one scene. I'll tell you just one quick story. We came to this one scene. This was towards the end of my career. And in the NYPD, we, if there's one of you, there's five of us. If there's two of you, there's 10 of us. You know, it's like that is so, actually safer. That's yeah, not yeah. to hurt anyone. That's because if there's more of us, then you have less likely of a chance to like think that, um, you know, you there's a try point. something. Yeah. Yes. Or to have to use a gun. If it's yeah. one on one. Yeah. You know, being overpowered. It's like I could try it get away. Their yeah. head. So yeah. there was a bunch of us because there was a man that was um, very intoxicated. And he was a big guy. Mm. He was a big guy. He was very intoxicated. And we were trying to get him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. We thought there might be some criminality because the way the call came in. But first thing we had to do was make sure he was safe, make sure he was in the hospital and they could check him for drugs and alcohol. So he decides to, he sits down on the curb and everyone's trying to get him because nobody wants to, you know, it's always easier to talk somebody into mm -hmm. than, you know, that's the They're last resort. Yeah. Like, yes. you know, anybody that thinks that that's our go-to, that's not, that's, so nobody wants to, right. mm -hmm. we want to, you know, go home and, and kiss our kids, yeah. you know? So I, you know, with the, I was like, oh, I might have to use the mom voice, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and so I, but it's that mom negotiations that we are able to do yeah. as females on that job. It's like, so I walk over and this big guy sitting on the curb and I kind of lean my leg on the curb and I'm like, so what do you want? And he looks at me and he goes, what do you want? And I go, <laughs> I want you to get up and get in that bus. Yeah, that's so what I want. Get up and get in the bus. And we call ambulances buses. Oh, so it wasn't an actual bus. Yeah. It was weird. That's the, that's the lingo. <laughs> and um, he goes like this. He goes, Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure your colleague looked at you like, what did you just do and say? <laughs> What's super the bad voice? Yeah. We got the power of the mom voice, right? <laughs> and it's a matter, I guess, of asking in a certain way yeah, rather like than demanding. Yeah. 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 You know, it's like, I want you to get up and get in the bus. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> that know, makes that, sense. It, yeah. I probably sounded like his mom to yeah. somebody. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's um, really cool. Yeah. So yes. then with the spirituality, that's kind of been like your next chapter, right? Yeah. Now. So what are you doing now? Well, I'm actually, I've, since I've retired and I was able to really quiet myself, my, yes, yeah. <laughs> my yeah. youngest went off to college, Aww. my other two are doing great. I've really been able to connect with the angels. That's amazing. I did start an online business that mm -hmm. has like crystals, but I don't, you know, I always tell people these are just tools to raise your vibration. Mm -hmm. Like it's nothing's a magic wand. We right. all know that, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing's a magic wand. This is like something that you can use to help you quiet your mind, raise your vibration and open up and seek out what is the angels are just Calling. waiting for us. Oh. <laughs> They'll, they, you know, I follow this one woman called Lorna Byrne. Uh, her name is Lorna Byrne. And she says she calls the angels that don't have a specific job unemployed angels. Mm -hmm. She's like, there's millions of unemployed oh, angels waiting. Job. Yeah, waiting for a job wow. and waiting for us to to ask, waiting for us to open up. Yeah. So that's been a lot of fun. It just it, because as I go through that, um, hoping that Maybe somebody else will hear, you know, with the social media and stuff like that. And sometimes like I'll put a video up like the other day I put a video up and it got like, I don't know, like 350 views. Nothing. Nothing's going viral. Trust me. <laughs> and I looked at the retention and the retention was maybe three people made it to the end. And all I said to myself was, well, that was the three people that the angels wanted to hear this. But and it's it's yeah. like, it's you don't have to worry. Yeah. It's like it's in. You know, but then it's also he so cathartic and healing for me. Right. And, you know, I'm sure as we all have, whatever trauma is like 
rolling around in our heads, you know, and we have to find ways to have the release for that mm-hmm. and the outlets and and support. And um, that's why, you know, like your sister-in-law is one of my, uh, you know, yeah. my go-tos. And, yeah. you know, you were um, – many people are, you know, have their – tribe. And, yeah. Yeah. Yes. and it's, uh, it's, it, I have a really, really good support system. And now that it's 2024, when I, I'm not the woo woo friend. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now yeah, that you're just like, like really it's darn yeah. Yeah. Yes, right? yeah. I love that. Do you I find have, cops uh, reach out to you? What do they do? A lot of cops reach out. I still have a, um, really close friends from the police department, and some are still working, some are retired. And do they want your guidance? I guess, like with the angels or the spirituality. Some do. Some do. Some will ask me. I mean, and like I said, some ask in a very, you know, like a, the first steps into it. Like somebody was saying to me, "I feel like my luck is really bad. What stone do I need for better luck?" And I'm like. The magic penny. Yeah. <laughs> right. But um, what are some ways that you connect with the angels? I mean, do you meditate? You know, is it kind of like like what are what are your go to for that? Um, you know, is it like sitting by the beach? Just curious how you connect. I connect well. First of all, I talk to my guardian angel all day long, all day long. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I say good morning. And I thank them for being there for me. And when I do my meditations, I do I do some actual very specific prayers that um, I am. I have a book. I have a lot of books, right? Don't we all? Mm-hmm. One of stuff that we love. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you pull it all together, right? And I pull all the books, okay. and I do. And but mine is like a visualization. I'll visualize whatever angel it is with the color surrounding them, then surrounding me, penetrating me, extending from me, becoming me. And then there are specific things that specific angels do work with. And I, you know, if I'm like, for example, for today, when I was doing my meditations, I asked, uh, I always ask Michael, Michael wants us to ask for his help too. That's another thing is um, he's, you know, not enough people are calling on St. Michael. This has been passed on to me from another angel person. So I called Michael, I call in Zadikiel because that's the violet um, flame of trans- transformation, transformative tr- violet flame, and that clears out worry and over concern. Mm-hmm. And then Jophiel, um, his color is yellow, and that's for um, illumination. So during this process, um, I visualize the crown of my head open and Jophiel's yellow light coming wow. through me to just so I don't like, you know, just sit here and go. <laughs> I don't. You know, yeah. yeah. Like, he gives you the information that's already within you. Right. And then when I do this, and I do it on a regular basis because I love it, but um, when I do this, what I get is like independent thoughts put into my head. Like I tell people, listen, I'm, I'm not I'm not the brightest person. I'm not saying that. I'm, I can't spell. I can't do math. Mm-hmm. But sometimes like a thought will come to me just completely independent of any knowledge that I have. And that'll be something that I speak about. And that to me is like these downloads that I get. And a lot of times it'll cut, it'll, the thought will keep rolling around in my head and rolling. And I'll say, no, I'm not comfortable with that. And then I'll go away. Mm-hmm. Or if I am comfortable with it, then I'll share it with somebody or I'll speak about it or something like that. So it's kind of like a, a download, I guess, you know, that's it. But, you know, it, I mean, there's a lot of specific ways that you can do it. But I, for me, and I think what I, try to tell people is first thing is just being just opening yourself up to it yeah. just opening yourself up being and, open-minded yes yes and saying i'm ready to receive these messages right yeah you know can you can you help me today starting i tell people like your guardian angel is like the you go to your guardian angel loves you Aww. so much so so much and they are with you from the second and does everyone born. have a guardian everyone has a guardian angel. People, every yeah. single person has a guardian angel it doesn't matter on race religion creed anything and they, these angels go back for millennia you know and your guardian angels there from the second you're born to the second wow. that you're you know Last uh, transition yeah 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 that's amazing yeah. and they love you so so much and so much. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And they talk to each other. Oh. Like if, um, you know, if I'm thinking about something and I need help with something, my guardian angel may speak to somebody else's guardian angel and and have that. And then they would say, you know, so-and-so is like needs a little help with that. And then I'll get a call from that person. 
yeah. because they, they're they like, you know, I was just thinking about you today because our guardian angels are talking. Connected us. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess throughout your life, are there other angels that can come in that can help guide you too? Is that um, your guardian? I, well, like I said, I I work with the archangels mostly. So it's Michael, Zadigil, Jophiel, Shamuel, Raphael, Uriel, and, and also Metatron. Those are the ones that I use on a regular basis. But um, I, I like reading about, we were just listening on the way over here, A uh, one of the women that I love to listen to, Lorna Byrne, who actually sees angels, and she was talking about the angel of hope. So there's always like a different angel that I'll research. There's a, I have another book that's about angels and goddesses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's really kind of cool because there's certain goddesses that are attached to angels. And that terminology comes a lot from like the Hindu Mm -hmm. because they have a lot of goddesses in their, their practices, but those are spiritual beings that work with the certain archangels. So it's something that I, reach out to every day and I learn a little bit more and I share, uh, you know, when I feel comfortable sharing, sometimes I feel a little bit like maybe it's not making sense. <laughs> I'm like, did I get that across the right way or something? But well, it's complex. Um, so yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> One of the big things that I'm trying to, for myself, and um, I just had, um, I was going to post a video tonight or tomorrow about is putting, is realigning myself with gratitude. I mean, look at the, the look at today. First of all, look at, t- look at what we're doing here today. Yeah. Beautiful women with beautiful mm-hmm. families. I came here with a beautiful friend <laughs> and uh, in a car that runs. Yeah. Yeah. So and, much to be grateful for. Yeah. 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 Senses, you know, I think yes. senses. And an amazing you know. career you had. Like, what gratitude yeah. for an amazing yeah. career you had. Like, yeah. 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 you know, just trying to realign yeah. myself in gratitude oh, yeah. every day. Even like, you know, we had that, that storm on Saturday, mm-hmm. a little bit of snow, right? I had to be somewhere really early Saturday morning. So I'm like, oh, gotta go. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, I gotta be, I have to be grateful that yeah. I have a car to shovel. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that I have physical ability to yeah. go. That I have yeah. the help for that. It's funny that, that I, you know, you just line don't myself. You have to shift yeah. Yeah. your thinking. Yeah. Yeah, and I true. think that helps us with everything that we're doing and, and, and as mothers, especially mm-hmm. because that really after whatever jobs, like I said, I was born in California. I moved to Manhattan. I lived in Europe for a while. Uh-huh. I'm, you know, in my retirement, I spent a lot of time in Jersey and any experience that I've had, nothing compares to what it is with the job we have as moms and sure. how lifelong it is. I mean, there's no retirement in that. Thank yeah. goodness. Oh, Thank goodness. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's- oh, wait, I- such a zodiac nerd and the girls know this i was like i can't wait to find out what sign she is oh i'm a libra a lot of sense about being in law enforcement yes yes definitely and i did i loved to color in the lines when i worked i was like <laughs> No, it's got to be this way. And, <laughs> but like I said, I have to say that's pretty much how the NYPD operates. It's really a great, a great thing. But a friend of mine had said to me recently, oh, I thought you, you know, would know a little bit more about this. And I'm like, I'm very fascinated by it, but I don't know that much about astrology. I know we just came into like a really cool moon, though, right? Like the moon in Leo or something. Yeah, Virgo. Yeah. Okay. See, I could sure. be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Virgo. Mm-hmm. All I, all I know is I quickly read something the other day. It was like, if you find yourself being uh, organizing a lot at the house today, it's probably because you're in Virgo because they're very. Oh, you mean the, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then, yeah. and for the, you, the crystals too, does that help like incorporate your spirituality with the angels? Like crystals? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, and it, I think that what the crystals mainly do is, and bring your vibrations up. It also gives you something. Sometimes it's just as simple as gives you something to, to mm-hmm. hold, mm-hmm. to kind of, yeah, keep your, calm keep yourself. your calm. I have to, kind of, and yeah. I, I love the rose quartz. Like I just found myself gravitated yeah. towards that. Like, well, and it's so funny because people, when I, if I do um, anything and I, and I have a holistic fair coming up this, this um, Sunday, and I can't think of the information right off the top of my head, but that's okay. <laughs> um, it'll be on my website, but uh, I'm or on my social media. But it's like people will come and they'll be like, "What does that do?" And I'm like, "That's not, not how it works." It works. Yeah. I'm like, "You just need to be drawn to something, mm-hmm. and you're drawn to the the rose quartz, yeah. and so that's the vibration that your body is looking to uh-huh. um, resonate with, yeah. yeah. And it's, so it's uh, everything, you know, and it's all scientific too. It's like Einstein said, everything is energy. I believe, yeah." yeah. He said, this is not 
philosophy. This is physics. Everything is energy. A if thousand. you want to understand the universe. And energy is all around us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool. It's all around. And yeah. I feel like it totally matters what type of energy or vibration you choose to be, right? Like the gratitude, like how do you show up every day to work? What vibration are you choosing today? Yeah. And then also to give ourselves the break when we realize that we um, are in alignment, uh, out of alignment. Mm-hmm. Go sit quietly. Yeah. I, I do that doodling now, mm. like the Zen doodling and stuff like that. Or, you know, like like our kids, when you see your child that's just overwhelmed, you either put them in a quiet place or you give them a time out or you give them a break. You know, go give yourself a time out. Go yeah. put yourself in the corner and go relax a little bit, you know, and hold your crystal and just close your eyes. Or I feel like you know. uh, even as moms, we don't know that enough. Like it's yeah. okay to like sit in silence. I need a time out. <laughs> yeah. And sit alone in silence. <laughs> it could be powerful, right? Yeah. To like just not have any constant noise. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you are on social media then? I am on social media. It's um, Crystal Rise Up is the name of the company. Cool. And um, so on Facebook and um, TikTok, it's Crystal Rise Up. And um, Instagram, it's Crystal. Un- I want to t- say it like all the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> underscore rise underscore up. Awesome. Yeah, well, that's my handle, right? Is that we got? Yes, right. My kids are so funny. They're always like, especially my 20-year-old. That's my youngest is 20. <laughs> She's like. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> We're not cool anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's like really safe. Don't say that. Don't, yeah. don't do that. It's like, but I thought I was cool. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm the bomb diggity. She's like, bomb diggity. Oh my God. So not cool. Yeah. She's like, stop. It's okay. Our eight year olds don't think we're cool either. Yeah. No. I'm getting to that point already. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 We'll yeah. definitely tag everything. Okay, cool. Yeah. And sure. I want to say thank you so much for your service to thank you. New York thank and you for- all of the people that live there. I worked in Manhattan for 15 years. So even though you might not have yeah. been in Manhattan, I appreciate that someone like you was on that force as well. Um, mm-hmm. appreciate thank it. you. Thank you for, you know, even saying that it's like, because a lot of times it's like, you know, why do people like, we don't want to be there unless we have to. Mm-hmm. We don't, we we don't want to be there unless you call us or we don't want to be there unless yeah. somebody needs help. We're not just like, let me just, you know, go yeah, out and see if we muscles. can. Yeah, yeah. Let me see yeah. if I can just go make someone's life miserable today. Yeah. I want to go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a coffee. That's uh-huh. what I want to know. Okay. <laughs> but like, my kids was like, you know, I saw this cop car go flying into Dunkin' Donuts lights and sirens. And I go, um, maybe they were getting robbed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. But I appreciate that. It's nice to hear it. Thank you very much. Yeah, It was great thank to hear a positive so story about it. So thank you for shedding light on that. That was awesome. Yeah, to serve and you. protect. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for taking so, the time. Thanks so much for having me. I was, uh, I, admit, I was a little bit of nervous that angels had their, their work cut out for them. But <laughs> as you can see, I'm kind of a yapper. It so. flows. Yes. <laughs> it flows. Uh, I think they're no, very I happy that you shared your story. Yeah, yeah, I think it was incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Well, yeah. Yeah, and to making new friends. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe to listen to more.